Let's go. Let's go. Bam, 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 bam. Shout out to everybody here on the live. Thank you for jumping on and appreciate each and every one of you for being here. Sharing your most precious asset with me, and that is your time. We're here on Sunday morning bringing it to you. Look, this is a whipsaw pattern. This usually happens when we're about to go really high up to the upside because they wanted to get all the shorts out, all the longs out. They didn't want anyone with them. They wanted to get rid of the extra baggage before they whipped to the upside. See the whipsaw down and up, and they liquidate every single person. Usually finds a low somewhere in the middle here for a bounce, to the upside, it's a doji strategy, something to think about the whipsaw pattern right off the bat. That's what we saw. Um, also, in my trading group, we were looking at it as a diamond pattern. It's a bit of a diamond, right? And you can see this diamond will reverse back to the upside 68% of the time. That's a diamond that could reverse back to the upside, a diamond pattern, all right? So right off the bat, we just taught you two things, the whipsaw and the diamond. You may have never heard about them before in your life. Let's bring that music down just a little bit. It's a little loud there. Let's keep it moving on a Sunday night. Shout out to everybody here. I have a trading group for $3 a day, and I do updates for Bitcoin three to five times a day. I like to do these updates in the morning on the weekends for free for everyone in my community that's on the YouTube channel because you can see what you would get if you would join my trading group. So right off the bat, this is just basically look at the amazing information you would receive. So last night, you were watching my trading group. You were getting down and dirty, right? You were, you were getting it in. You loved it. And I talked about this idea that we were in this rising wedge. We were likely to come down here to the bottom of this pattern, right? I said, when I talked about it, I said, I wouldn't be surprised if Bitcoin was at 19,050 to 19,150 when we wake up tomorrow morning sideways. Actually, I don't see a lot of amazing behavior. Uh, one thing that I do have to point out to you right away is a shoulder, a head, and a bit of a right shoulder there that could break us to the downside here by the bottom of the pattern. Just something that you must heed. That's a head and shoulder pattern. We have a point of control here that we're fighting. 19,100, we got to stay above it. And we got to really, really hold that and make a move. Um, right now, you can see we kind of broke above this channel. Before I went to bed too, I did point out the fact that this was in a bit of a, you know, uh, yeah, I guess you could call it a bull pennant. Um, it was consolidating tightly in the range. If you just took the length of the base of the triangle, that's basically where we went. We got to a high of 19,198, which I suggested was the place we could go. And it's a bit of a double top. So it's interesting, we have a double top, we have a bit of a double bottom. We're in these two zones. And you can see here's our low range at 19,000. Here's our high range at 19,200. And when Bitcoin consolidates like this, my goodness, a big move is coming for Bitcoin. So <clears throat> let me clear my throat. Let me show you what I see happening for the day for Bitcoin. So look, resistance, resistance for this diagonal resistance. But we broke above it. Now we're attempting to use it as support, 15 minute does want to move. One hour says, I'm rolling over on you, baby. I couldn't get above the resistance. Not a good sign. Four hours says that I want to keep it moving, though, and I did make a higher low. So if you look at this, here's your low. Here's your high, right, all the way up there. This is a higher low compared to that. Bitcoin must put in a higher high. So right now, to keep the trend alive, we got to see the four-hour time frame, the daily time frame. When we get this next reversal, this daily, the 22-hour, everything seems like it wants to reverse. When we get this reversal... We must, 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 must make a high previous, higher than this previous high. Bitcoin must put in a high above 19,800 to remain bullish. If we get a huge move up here and we end up hitting hard resistance in this area or this area, we're going to have to short the market again, at least down to the bottom of the pattern. So I'm preemptively getting you ready for that move. When you see it, you should be three, four, five days ahead of every single one of your moves. Like you should be projecting the idea of where the next resistance is so you can plan your next short, short resistance, long support. Stay focused, stay motivated, stay passionate, stay ready to go, baby. And that's why I'm here every single day. And I don't take a day off, baby, because I love what I do. When you're passionate about what you do, work just drifts away into passion. And passion becomes your life. And life reinvigorates you every single moment of the day. So that's how I stay with this energy. That's how I stay motivated. That's how I stay pumped. Even when Bitcoin dumps, even when my account goes down hundreds of thousands of dollars because I hold a lot of crypto. I love it. Every single day I'm in here for the long haul, baby. And I don't worry about the ups and downs of the minutia. So look, we're looking at this tight channel, right? It is what it is. Broke out of this tight square. And there's a couple other ways to look at it. We could say, all right, it's still in this tight channel here and getting rejected in a bit of a broadening wedge. All right, I'm, I'm okay with that. 
And then we could even open this up and say, hey, we're trying to stay inside this pattern now. See this? And it's a bear flag-esque. All right? We don't need this rising wedge anymore. We're going to delete that. But just bear with me. I'm, I'm looking for the new pattern. The pattern changes every 24 hours, every, even earlier, even quicker than that. You could almost say this was it. You dipped out of it. You dipped back in, and you're attempting to hold the zone. You see this? Now, why do I have this measured move? Because if this ends up being a bear flag, which it looks like it can be, I want to show you where we're likely to, he to head if we break down. And so if we break to the downside, we're likely to go all the way to 18,474. That's what we're looking at on the low, which ain't too bad, actually. So we have some support waiting for us down there. One thing I also want to show you, right? Remember, we did that head and shoulder there on the 15. But one thing I also want to show you is this could be a bigger inverted. We've been talking about this for a couple days, right? So the idea, ever since I saw this big, first I had it here, but now this may be the head, all right? So we're watching this closely. One hour doesn't look great. I'm not too proud of it, right? So let's look at the 15 minute. 15 minute wants to throw a bit of a move. So let's break it down. Right now we got this falling wedge on the 15 that wants to break to the upside. This is what we're looking at. Can we get the move though? Or are we going to get a bit of an M pattern here? So we bring this up and this is kind of what we're seeing. And normally you should never leave something out of a pattern. So you can leave it like this if you want. I've been experimenting with this and I have years and years of back testing the theory of letting this head fall out of the pattern. But that's something that you're going to have to figure out on your own after, after years of playing around. I can get you there, and no one can take away your time in the market. Remember that. So 15-minute does want to push to the upside. How much we push up is the question. What worries me is that the one hour is not in our favor, and this looks to be a head and shoulder pattern. Uh, this doesn't get above the top of the shoulder, or it goes sideways here for a while, and we get all the way back up to this 15-minute. We're likely to roll over. So you'd be looking at the five minute for a bearish retest, try to get back inside the pattern of this point of control, and then a drop to the downside. Remember, the measured move would take us at least to the bottom of this pattern at 19,000. And then if we lost that, it's 18,800. And if we lose that, it's 18,430. So things to think about on the radar, things to talk about. So can the 15 minute get us above previous resistance? And as I said before, if Bitcoin can't close a candle above previous resistance, you must Short the market. Now, I'm not a financial advisor. Nothing I say and do should be taken as financial advice. But I'm saying a trader, a person, generally, if you can't get above, like right here, we couldn't get above resistance, 19,002. We tried it again. We couldn't get above 19,195. We tried it again. And so now we have a lower level that, look, now we can't get above here, here. So now we've got another new level of resistance at 19,150. Can't get above it. So if Bitcoin can't close a candle in the next two, three hours above 19,200, you got to expect sideways action or more downside. Also, this is Sunday night into Monday, the most volatility night, the most volatility of any night of trading in the market. I tend to watch the markets on Sunday night. I tend not to trade on Sunday night because that's when all the European markets, Asian opens up at 8 p.m. tonight. And whether the, if they sell off, it creates a rally throughout the middle of the night. And then we come into carnage throughout the morning. We are going to look at the DXY and ES1 in a second too for you, but just bear with me here. So this falling wedge breaks to the upside on the 15 minute. But does it just end up making a bit of an M pattern? So we're waiting to see how much the 50-minute can give us. Right now, it's showing signs of lack of momentum right off the bat. Seven-minute is trying to give us the love, too. But again, we're dealing with resistance now at 19,150, which is pretty insane. Can't get above, can't get above, can't get above, can't get above. You must identify your local support of resistances. Because if you can't get above 19,150, then forget about all the people telling you 20K, 21K, and all that other nonsense. So it's all about local support of resistance. You get above it, you can, you can move on. It's just like building steps, right? You put in a board, put in a nail, put in another board. You can't build an entire set of stairs unless you build one step. Same idea here. You can't get above big support and resistance unless you get above local support and resistance. It is what it is. I hope I can teach you that and keep you focused, all right? And that's why the small time frames can give you insight, and you must heed them. So remember, I've talked about a lot today you may have forgotten. Here's that head and shoulder on your radar. You must heed that, all right? Here's the idea that you can't get above 19,150. You must heed that. Uh, you can't get above that. Expect more downside, right? This is now forming to be a bit of a symmetrical triangle in my mind that could break up or down either way. The measure move up takes you to 19,350. The measure move down, if it was a bear flag, it takes us all the way to 18,400. If we just take the smaller idea here, it takes us somewhere to about 18,900, 18,008 area. So that's these are the two areas you're you know you're likely to go go to if we break down from here the wick deck there right and then never clone alone but i got people here so i can clone but never clone alone all right don't play games 
and right there at about 19,004, right? We still have huge resistance at 19,006. We still have huge resistance at 19,900 at 20K, right, that we must get back above. So watching this closely, I wouldn't be surprised if we just went sideways for most of the day, right? But I see lack of bearish mo bullish momentum for sure. If anything, I see lack of bullish momentum. Um, the, ba the bears aren't that strong either, so we've been stuck in this pattern. But patterns have probabilities, and this probability for this pattern is more likely to break to the downside uh, if the 15-minute can't really get us above a previous high. So we're watching this very closely. I think I've made it really clear that the 15-minute must break above 19,150, 19,200, and 19,250 really to remain bullish. Um, otherwise, we're going to make a double top and likely roll over. And then the one hour is not looking bullish. It's overbought pushing to the downside. Four hours, okay. 22 hours, okay. And I'm going to show you the bigger time frame now. I'll show you this. I mean, I keep going over this every day. And it's the reason why I went long for Bitcoin. And it's this swing up to swing up with this swing down to swing down. That's a very large daily divergence. Um, it, it carries all over into the weekly. And when you see weekly bullish divergence, you must heed it. It's very rare that we see something of that nature. Also, this huge wick up and this pressure, this buy pressure to the upside here on that daily candle is quite interesting. We are now holding above 19,000. It's kind of in the zone, right? We bounce, we bounce, we bounce, we bounce, we bounce. It is a very strong area of support. As you can see, it goes all the way back into this area on July 1st and June 30th, and even here on July 13th. So can we hold the zone is the question. Can this falling, this mini little falling wedge here break to the upside on the daily time frame and make the move? It's a bit of a cup and handle as we've been showing you. Sammy, cup and handy to the upside. It's a bit of a cup and handle here that could break you to the measured move at about 21,800 again. 21.8 is our nemesis. I don't know if you remember that time we were battling that area, but I'd, I'd rather battle 21,008 than 19,800. I'll tell you that. So we are going to go from there. I just wanted to show you the big picture as well. Jumping into the dollar index, we have a double top here on the four-hour time frame. We'd love to see the dollar index not get above this resistance at 113.48. Always hit the like button. Always support your local family YouTuber. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. You're the best. Uh, and there we have a double top here on the four hour, which could roll over on us. The daily also wants to roll over on us. This is a good sign for Bitcoin. However, you know, um, the 15 minute is trying to make a bit of a move, but that's probably just a spike. I like what I'm seeing. One hour and the four hour both want to roll over. We're at resistance. It's likely that the dollar decides to drop down. This is going to be a relief rally for Bitcoin. It would propose me to be long into Monday because the dollar index is struggling. Everybody, that's your Bitcoin update for the morning. Um, thank you so much for jumping on in. I greatly appreciate you for being here. And uh, if I see anything else in the market, I scan it and I look for all the hottest alts and any setup that I'm looking for. Look at Vitit. Vitit was tight in a channel. Did get a bit of a move to the upside. Not amazing, but it was in a falling wedge. I'll keep you updated for more if you stay tuned. I'll be back tonight at 8 p.m. for Bitcoin, Sunday night, and the weekly candle close to get you ready for the week ahead and we're going to cross reference what we went over right now everyone thank you so much for being here please comment like and subscribe hit the bell for notifications so you can find out when i post my next video remember if you came to the channel then you're already doing the right thing crypto is life i love you all thank you so much for everything you people rock you know that you're the best the lifers are the best and uh i'll see you on the next one be safe <laughs>